Welcome to the No Fear Sock Knitting class online. My name is Denise and this is class number eight, Heel Flap and Gusset Made Simple. I am so excited to be here with you today and bringing you this new class. It's been a little while since my last tutorial uh, and I'm so, so happy to share a solution, I think, to a very complexing problem. Back in class number four, when I first talked about knitting the heel flap and gusset, I broke the class up into two sections. We had heel flap and gusset on two circular needles and heel flap and gusset on magic loop. Today we are going to be doing it on two circular needles, but everything that I'm doing can be applied to magic loop as well. And over the course of the last year, it's been almost a year since I recorded that video, I have knit endless pairs of socks since then. And I kept thinking to myself, I've also been teaching um, online classes with Vogue, uh, Knitting Live and doing other tutorials. And I just thought there's gotta be a simpler way to teach this. And in teaching with Vogue, um, we've broken the class up into two parts and it was really wonderful, but we always hit that snag right when we got to the heel and rearranging all of the stitches. So when you are knitting your sock, traditionally, you are knitting this way. So you're working on your sock and you work across the front of your sock, then across the back, and you're working in the round cross the front, cross the back, cross the front, cross the back. And then you reach that point where you have to start your heel flap. And your heel flap is usually knit at the beginning of the round and you go back and forth in rows. You work your heel flap and then you do your heel turn. After that's done, you then have to pick up stitches along your heel flap on both sides and that's when the adventure I'm going to use only positive words in this class. <laughs> that is when the adventure begins um, and a little wee bit of stress starts to kick in because that rearranging of stitches can feel a little bit daunting. And I did take you through how to do that as thoroughly as I could back in class four um, and also class class four, class four and four A because it, it, there were two parts. Um, but since then I have learned a much simpler way to knit the heel flap and gusset, and I am so excited to bring that with to bring that here to you today. Basically, there's no more rearranging of stitches. The way you start is how you finish, and I am going to show you that in just one second. If you are new, if you are coming into this class, um, if this is the first time you're watching the No Fear Sock Knitting class online, I do have several, as I said, this is class eight, so there are about eight or nine, actually there are 14 altogether <laughs> videos on how to knit socks. The reason this is class number eight is because it's still part of the main structure of knitting the sock. So what, oh, I'm totally stuttering. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a little while since I've been in front of the camera. So um, you can go back and watch all of those other videos. And I basically take you through the first video class one is getting started and we talk about yarn and needles and each class is broken up for you. In, in each class, the sock and knitting the sock is broken up for you into sections. So you can go back and rewatch all of that. I'm not going to cover a lot of those, a lot of those basics because I've already recorded those videos and those tutorials are there for you. I will link to everything in the description box down below. Today, we are going to be covering just the heel flap and gusset, how to knit that heel flap and gusset in a much simpler way on two circular needles. Is everybody ready? Because I'm so excited to be here and so excited to show you this. So enough talk, let's get started. So traditionally, and the way I taught this initially, you are working your sock in profile. Okay, which is how this sock looks. So I've already worked the heel flap and the heel turn, and now I have rearranged my needles, having worked back and forth on this sock. The beginning of the sock round was here. So I would work across the front, turn, work across the back, and I did that all the way down to the heel flap. I then knit my heel flap, knit the heel turn, and then began the process of rearranging my stitches 
because my round will now begin and end at the center back of the heel and I rearrange my stitches picking up along the left side of the heel flap then knitting half of the instep that is all on one needle then I turned and continued to pick up the second half of the heel of the instep the right side of the heel flap and then the heel stitches now turning my sock from front to back to profile okay and that is how I've traditionally taught this and how many many videos teach this um, this entire process it honestly it was the only way that I knew how to knit a sock if you were using circular needles DPNs distribute a little bit differently and actually more in keeping with what I'm going to teach today. So with this new method, there's no more rearranging of needles, no more of that, So and rearranging of stitches. So what we're doing now is here is the cleaner and simpler way. And this is not new. This uh, Many of you out there may say, oh, I've, I've been doing it that way for years, but many of you have not. So it's always good to have more tricks in your bag and more options for your knitting. There may be times when this method is what you want to do. There may also be times when you want to try this new method. So what we've done here, I am at, here's the beginning of my round. Um, and again, if you've been watching the videos, whenever um, my working yarn and my tail are on the same side, I know I have completed a round, okay? You can go back through all the other videos for all of these other details. So what we're doing now, I have been working back and forth on my sock, did not change my position. I worked my heel flap, I worked my heel turn, kept my knitting in this same orientation, in the same position, picked up along the left side of my heel flap, kept my stitches, my instep stitches, all on one needle. There's no more rearranging. And then when I turn to pick up the right side of my heel flap, I am still using the same needle, okay? So no more rearranging. And all of your decreases then are taking place right at the intersection between the two needles. So there's no more need for markers Actually, you can't place a marker because it would fall off. You can put a little uh, removable marker onto the stitch if that helps you, but there's no need for that because you know when you come to the end of the needle that you're finished, you do your decrease, then you work across your instep, then you come around to the other side, you're back on your back needle, you're going to work another decrease, and your round still begins and ends in the center of the heel stitches. Okay, so let's see how to do that. So I wanted to, I have these two socks in progress because I wanted you to see the difference in the two techniques. Okay, now, as I said, you're starting the way you end. So begin, because you're not rearranging any stitches, once you've completed all of your decreases, right along here, and as you can see, there's my gusset. It's forming right in here. As I, once I finish those decreases and my stitch count is back to the original number, which in this case there's 64 stitches, so once I have 32 stitches on this needle, there are 32 stitches on my instep, I know I am back to my original number and I can continue knitting down to the toe. Once you get to the toe, you're going to work your decreases on either side and finish your sock with the Kitchener. There is never any rearranging of stitches. Oh my gosh. I'm just gonna pause and let that sink in. <laughs> so let me show you how to do that. Let's move all of this out of the way. Okay, so I have a sock here in progress. Okay, not much yarn left, but enough to, for me to show you how to do this. So I have been, once again, working back and forth, and this is just going to be a little sample that I hold on to after, and we'll talk about that later. So I've been working back and forth, working my rounds, uh, and I'm following the No Fear Shorty Sock pattern. I will also link to that down below. All of these videos use that pattern. That is the accompaniment pattern for this series. So now, here I am. I've got my stitch markers right here. So I'm just going to pull one of these out. Doesn't matter what color. 
Okay. And I'm ready to begin. So as always, I always knit with you all in real time because I do think that is much more helpful for you to see what I'm doing. So let's pull off a little bit of yarn. Okay. All I did was just stretch this out so I could have a, a length of yarn here to work with. So here I am, heel flaps done, heel turn is done. Here are my 20 stitches, okay, for the back of my heel. I am going to divide those in half and I will show you how to do that right now. So I'm going to knit across. Oop, here we go. I'm going to knit across and three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I've now divided my heel in half. I'm going to place my removable marker right onto my needle. And I know once I reach that marker again, I have completed a round. I'm going to finish knitting across the heel. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And now I'm going to pick up stitches all along my heel flap, okay? And I go into detail on this a lot more in class four and five, okay? So picking up the stitches, I'm, I'm not really demonstrating that right now, I'm just going to go ahead and do that. So I am going to knit these stitches up, just like this, and I'm going under and I'm catching both legs. Now, you can place a marker, another marker at this point, Okay, just making it a little bit easier to count your stitches, so let's do that. Okay, I will use two yellow markers at that point. So I'm just going to slip that on. I won't go back and undo those. So you can put a marker right at this point, right in here, and that is, there we go. So I have my 10 stitches from the heel, and I've already picked up two stitches, <clears throat> excuse me, along the left side of the heel flap. So I'm going to continue picking up. Whoops. If you guys have been following along with me for a little while, you know I always have trouble looking <laughs> through the camera. So that's three, four, five, here we go. Let's come a little closer to the camera so you can see, six, seven, eight, nine, there we go, oops, here's 10, 11, 12, and we are picking up 16 altogether, that's 13, here's 14, 15, and one more, 16. And I'm picking up all of those slip stitches right along that edge. I pick up one extra stitch at the intersection, that closes the gap so we don't get a hole. Okay, If you, again, if you need more explanation on how to do that, you go back and watch the other full video. This is just explaining, whoops, there we go. And of course I can't get that. Okay, I'm gonna go off camera for one sec. <laughs> oh my gosh, why can't I do this? Okay, oh my goodness. You're all like, who is this very unprofessional? Okay, here we go. <laughs> all right, so I've picked up my extra stitch, totally stretched that out now, okay? Picked up my extra stitch. I am now going to drop this needle. Now, this had been needle A. When we were working around and around, when we first started down here on the cuff, we had needle A and needle B. This is needle A. So I'm finished with this needle. I'm going to drop that one out of place. And I'm going to now knit with needle B, which is my instep needle. Okay, come across. Now, if you were working in a pattern, if your sock had a design on it, whether that's color work or a texture pattern, you would continue following your chart or following the repeat. So I'm just going to knit across 
and this is my 32 stitches on needle B. Oop, there we go. Okay, almost there. Just moving across here. Okay, almost there. Again, it may be tedious for some of you to watch this all in real time, but I do think it's a little bit more helpful. So you can just fast forward if you need to or want to. So I'm now at my last stitch for my instep. Here are my 32 stitches. I am done with this needle. I'm finished with that needle. Drop that one out of place. And I'm going to now pick up this other end. Now, why not this end? You're probably asking. And I'm going to show you why. You're not going to pick up the end that's closest to you because it's a little too difficult to pick these stitches up. It just feels a little bit too fiddly and I'm picking them up. I would be picking them up with my left hand. If that works for you, please feel free. But because I am right-handed, what I want to do is now grab the other end of this needle. Oops, just hit the camera. Sorry about that, guys. So I'm just going to leave that out of the way. Let's do that again. So here, I'm finished with this needle. I want to grab the other end of needle A, okay? Right along here, pick up my working yarn, and I'm going to do the same thing I did on the other side. Pick up that extra stitch in the intersection. Always put, whoops, pick that up wrong. There we go, pick up that extra stitch. Hold on, going off camera to do that because <laughs> For some reason, this yarn is just not behaving for me today. Okay, pick up the other stitch, and now I'm going to continue picking up along the heel flap, and I'm just going to count. Again, there's no reason to put a marker because you know all of my instep stitches are on one needle, so there's no reason to put a marker there. All right, and I'm going to pick up, and you can freely count. Don't count the first one because that was your extra stitch. So I've picked up three, four, and I can pull this needle out of the way just so the point isn't poking at me. <laughs> and just continue picking up. Come a little closer to the camera here for you. Oh, goodness. This yarn is not behaving. Okay. All right, I think we got it now. There we go. Just picking up, so that's two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen right through here and 16. Now I'm back to the other end of that needle so I'm going to just push that into place and as you can see now I am working exclusively now on needle A. Here are my cords. All of my step instep stitches are on needle B. They're hanging out and I'm going to knit across the rest of the heel stitches, just like this. Okay, oh, and I realized I forgot to put the marker, so hold on, <laughs> on this side, so let's go back. So that was my extra stitch, and then two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, here's 16, so there's that space. I'm going to grab my other removable marker Put that right in there. Okay, and once you complete the first decrease round, you can remove those markers. If you'd like to keep them there, that's fine, but you don't really need them. So I've got three more stitches to go here. And I have just completed the first round. There we go. So I'm going to move my marker, just slip that over. I'm now beginning my first decrease round. So let's do that together. 
and I will show you how this works. So I'm going to knit across. And if you remember from past videos, I always knit through the back loop on this first round. Okay, so I come to the first marker. You can remove it at this point, okay, because the only action that's going to be taking place, I'm going to be knitting into the back loop on these stitches, on the heel flap stitches, just to reinforce that edge, okay, which I talked about in the other video, to work my first decrease right in here on these two stitches. Here is my intersection stitch, and then I'm coming across the front. So I'm just going to remove that marker, knit through the back loop, And you only do, you're only knitting through the back loop on this first decrease round. Okay, and that is strengthening those stitches that you just picked up. Okay, and it does feel a little bit tight, okay, because you have so many stitches on this needle. But again, if you just go slowly, it's so much more efficient and so much easier than all of that rearranging. Okay, and you get used to this very, very quickly. I've always knit my socks in the profile method, as I'm going to call it just for the sake of example right now. Always knit my socks that way when I was whenever I was knitting a heel flap and gusset. Now that I have been doing it this way, I don't think I'll ever go back to that again. <laughs> this is so much easier. Okay, so I'm down to my three stitches, so I'm going to knit those through the back loop. Again, just to keep those stitches secure, come, whoops, knit through the back loop, come on through, knit that intersection stitch through the back loop, and I'm done with this needle. Okay, I'm going to drop that needle out of place, work across my instep needle, okay, which was needle B, and I'm just going to continue working across. Okay, la 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 la. Trying to speed up my hands here. But then again, some people find it really soothing to watch others knit, so feel free to watch. <laughs> okay, almost across. Okay, and I'm almost there. Five stitches to go. Three, two, and one. Now I'm going to pick up, this one gets pulled out of place, it's hanging out, I'm finished with that one. Push this needle back in, and I've got all of my stitches on the one needle. Make sure you grab the correct end, okay? I did demonstrate how to fix it if you ever pick up the wrong end. One of these needles is going to drop out of place, <laughs> okay? So you definitely don't want to do that. Get yourself back in the right position. You're going to, again, work this side through the back loop. I'm going to slip, slip, knit through the back loop. There we go. And now knit these. Continue through the back loop until I reach that other yellow marker. Go. Almost there. Again, I'm watching this right now through the camera, <laughs> which always throws me off just a little bit. I know you all know that. Okay, almost there. Whoops. Okay. Almost to the second yellow marker. And I know once I reach that, I've done, I'm done working through the back loop on all of the instep stitches. I can remove that marker. Whoops, I went through the stitch, so just take it, unhook it. Just pull that off. And continue knitting. And once I reach that black marker, I have completed a decrease round. my first decrease round. And here I am. So I'm going to move that. And now this round would be a, just a plain round. I'm not going to knit that whole thing and bore you. But again, I'm just going to continue working, working my decreases at these three stitches, three stitches before the end of the needle, 
three stitches at the beginning of the needle. Depending on which side you're on, these stitches, this part of the gusset is going, you want your stitches to lean left, so you're going to do the SSK. On this side, you're going to do a knit two together because you want your stitches to lean this way. And you're going to continue working back and forth that way until I have decreased. I will continue working that way until I have got these all of these stitches back down to 32. And I will continue. Now I'm going to show you what that looks like here. Let's revisit this sock. And here are my decreases. Again, no hole. I have picked up my stitches. You see the base of those stitches are all twisted. Nice, clean. There we go, and there's no rearranging. Now, this, if you can see, I've done my decrease right in here. I have my single stitch, so I'm ready to do, to do another decrease. And I will continue working that way until my sock is back to the original number. And then you would continue working down to your toe. And you work your toe decreases the same way that you would in the instruction video for the toe. And that's it. Once you've gotten down to, once you've gotten down to back down to your original 32 stitches on this needle, you can remove this marker and just continue because your round, it doesn't it doesn't, your round no longer can begins and ends here. It you can return to it being on the side. What that does is it gives you an extra half around on one side. Okay, it will give you an extra half around on the right side. But once these two are back in place, you're going to continue going and then you would start working your decreases on starting on your right side. Does that make sense? And there you have it, you guys. Heel flap and gusset. No rearranging. Heel flap and gusset made simple. Oh my gosh. And there you have it, my friends. Heel flap and gusset made simple. Completely modified. No more rearranging of stitches. No more headaches. No more trying to remember which needle you're working on. Am I on needle A, needle B, needle one, needle two? You can just knit and end your sock the way that you begin and you are, you're good to go. How exciting is that, everybody? I, I hope you all are as excited about that as I am. I am so thrilled to have another method, another skill, another technique in my bag of tricks. Do you have to do this? Absolutely not. And again, some of you, I'm just holding on to, to a sock here because I'm going to talk about that in a second. Um, to some of you, this may be like, oh, what? that's nothing new. I've always knit my socks that way. And that's great for you. There are many people out there that have not knit their socks that way. Whoops. Um, many people out there that have not knit their socks that way. And this may be hearing angels sing, lights go off, sirens, fireworks, yay! A simpler method, no more rearranging. Some of you may also be a little ticked off and say, well, gosh, why didn't she teach it that way in the beginning? I taught it the traditional way, the way that it's been done for many, many years. And as a knitter, as I learn new things and am exposed to new things, I will bring that here to you, to this platform, to show you what I'm working on and to share a new technique with you. Again, I hope you all are as excited as I am. Again, as you're working your sock. So here's what's ha let's do it this way because I think it's a little easier to see. So as you're working, once again, you've gone around and around, you've worked your heel flap, finished all of your gusset stitches all in here, and now you are back down to your original number and you will continue, continue, continue knitting until you are ready to start the decreases for your toe and you finish off your toe the same way. I will link to all of the other classes in this series in the description box for you down below. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have enjoyed this. If you have any questions at all, please, as always, leave your comments down below um, and I will be happy to help and happy to answer. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you for joining me today. Happy knitting, everyone.